All right, guys, we're on episode four of Big Brother 26. This is the review. The show just ended uh, less than 10 minutes ago, and I got right on camera because I have to wake up really early for work in the morning, and I have to do something right after. I have a book for a wrestling show literally the same day, so I really will not have no time to do this. So I have to get right to the review, so let's go. So the episode starts off with Angela telling us why she nominated each person. She basically said that they were the people that were gaming the least, but her real target is Kenny with a chance of it turning into Matt. We see Matt and his DR being super excited that he didn't get nominated. I'm like, have you never seen this game before? Lisa is legit thrown off. She feels like she, I feel like she was definitely blindsided. She cried in a refrigerator, which was <laughs> kind of awkward. She said that there's nowhere to cry in this house, and she like cried in a the refrigerator. Then we see Angela start to cry. Angela's like crying, like bawling her eyes out, and I'm like, why are you crying? And at this point, I gave Angela the new nickname of Karen. So her name for the rest of this episode will be Karen. She sits in a room with Lisa, and she's bawling her eyes out to Lisa, and Lisa's sitting there straight stone face, like, yeah, Angela's apologizing, and I think this is the scene where Karen tried to hug Lisa, but Lisa turned down the hug, like, y'all can find that online, that was going all around on X and on YouTube, but... And this is the time where we all still liked Karen. Lisa was asking her, like, do you view me as a threat? And Karen's like, no, I view you as an ally and a friend, and I'm just like, what? Then Karen vents in her HOH room to like Joe and Chelsea and this is where she starts talking about Crazy Eyes aka Matt and like this is where we start to see the spiral start to begin. Next we get to like what I'm calling the allies portion of the show because we see Matt and Mackenzie kind of like flirt in the bed. Not the same bed, but their beds are close to each other. And Matt says that he thinks that Mackenzie did it on purpose. Uh, I think Mackenzie said that they were the last two to pick. Or maybe Matt said they were the last two to pick their beds. I'm not gonna lie, their flirting in the bed was kinda like, it was good. Like, it seemed authentic and cool. Like, they seemed like they'd be a good couple. Matt also mentioned that they're really good friends with Leah. So we have Matt, McKenzie, Leah. And Leah says that, of course, she bonds with them because, and I feel like this is a good strategy. Uh, I do want to be on this show, so maybe I shouldn't say this on camera. But I feel like if you're a single person and you ally up with a showman that usually works out pretty okay like in my opinion like look at season 17 and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, but Mackenzie actually told Leah and Matt about her power that she won and again I thought that this was an accident and I'm like or not a good decision and I said I can see Matt asking her to use this today well on tonight's episode Next, we see Chelsea, Cedric, and Joe, and they've been bonding real close. They're getting real close, and Cedric was, like, the narrator of this one. He says that they're all really cool with T-Core as well. He mentioned that they all got close with Angela because she's the HOH. That puts them at, like, five. Then she, he said that they're cool that they brought in Cam because Cam looks like he's athletic, isn't in shape, and can win some competitions. Then they brought in Quinn because he looks like he's like a, a super fan and can win the mental comps. They also brought in Chemo in that alliance because he's on the block and they felt like, oh, we can bring him in because he needs some people to turn to. It was like eight people, eight or nine people, and this alliance is called The Collective, but I'm going to start calling it The Whole House Alliance because it's so many people. Now, they formed this alliance when Angela was not around, but they seemed pretty authentic on bringing her in the alliance. Then I think it was Joe or maybe Cedric. Someone went up to the HOH room, maybe it was two people, to tell Angela about the alliance. Angela was really happy in the moment with them, but then when they left and in her DR, she told us about how upset she was. And I don't blame her because she was not a part of the... Like, I feel like if some people came to me with an alliance and I wasn't there, I'd feel like I'm at the bottom of the alliance or the alliance isn't real. Or I'm like, yeah, I'm the first to go. So, I didn't blame her with that, but she started, like, spiraling up with this. Like, she was like, oh, great, the collective's coming after me. I'm like, what? Why would they tell you the name of the alliance? Like, what? I don't know. Like, she was, she was spiraling here. 
Angela continued to spiral in her sleep. She was thinking of, like, what she could say to blow this up. And, like, Matt, she blamed everything on Matt. So then we get to the next morning. And everyone's, like, at breakfast, like, being so normal. And then Angela just comes down the stairs. We all have seen this by now. Like, this one, well, if you're a live feed watcher or if you're, like, a super fan of Big Brother, this one. Like, you can find this online. Uh, she goes down the stairs. She started to do a slow clap. And, like, so a couple people, like Lisa and I think maybe Joe, like they started, and I'm, I call Joseph Joe, like they started like clapping, like slow clapping with her, and because they thought something like fun was about to happen, and people was even saying it in ADR, but then she just started kind of going off, like a true Karen, saying that like he aggressively, verbally threatened her, and like, I'm like, wow, when you use those words, aggressively and threatening, you are definitely a Karen, but she just started saying like, Everyone that came to my room, thank you, but uh, that was a great performance for a low-budget movie. So now she's going after everybody. But then she turns her attention back to Matt, and she's just going off. Like she's, She talked about how MJ, who is now Mackenzie, so Mackenzie's name is MJ, uh, can do so much better than Matt, and Matt has crazy eyes. And she's mentioned crazy eyes a lot, but I think like the editing he made it seem like she mentioned it even more. But she was going insane. She was going insane with this. And everyone was so confused. I don't think a single person could see this coming. Like, Rabina was inside the bathroom, and, like, uh, some other people, like, they're just like, what is going on? Like, it was insane. It was insane. I've never seen something like this. She literally called it a traumatic experience, and I'm just like, Karen. Eventually, she starts to go down the stairs because she was on the stairs. Like, she was the one that was, like, doing a big dramatic scene. She goes down the stairs, and Matt actually stood up. And I was like, oh, like, whoa. <laughs> like, I don't know. It just seemed more confrontational when two people stand up. But, like, she stood up and was walking towards him. Then he stood up. And, like, he mentioned, like, his mom would see this. And she's, I think this was before she walked up. But he was like, she just kind of said, oh, yeah, your mom's going to see what an asshole you are. She didn't really say asshole, but I forgot the words. It was a lot. It was a lot. And people were shocked. Like, people were shocked. She mentioned MJ again. Then Matt was like, oh, yeah, I, I know MJ has this power, but I don't want her to use this power on me. I want to fight. Like, he was definitely coming off his victim, and he was playing that up. He was playing up the victim card even more. But Karen started, like, apologizing to everybody, like, hey. Oh, actually, something else that she mentioned was, um, I want to be mature. And he was like, this is too late. This ain't mature. And, like, it was funny. At the end, she apologized for being loud and all that to the rest of the house. It's like, except you. Like, she has some gifable moments. Some moments that will go down as, in my opinion, like, some... When she said, uh, your words are shit, so put them back in your ass, like, that is gonna be used not just in Big Brother world, but all over, like, the X, Twitter world, like, like, YouTube. That, that is, like, she has some great one-liners. And then she apologized to all of them for doing all that, and Matt started talking to Joe, like, that didn't happen. Come on, like, you know that didn't happen. And he was saying, like, you know that didn't happen. And I'm glad that Joe kind of stood his ground and was like, I don't know, I don't know, because, like, he wasn't there. Then we see Brooklyn, or, no, nah, I'm sorry, not Brooklyn. It was Mackenzie started to cry in a, a room, and Chelsea was comforting her, and then t -Core walked in. And, like, uh, she was just like, uh, what's her name? Mackenzie was just like, why did she have to bring me up? Why did she have to bring me up? And I completely understand that. And t -Core had a good point in her DR, where she was just like, at the end of the day, none of us was in that room. So we don't know what happened. So, and I, I like that everyone in the house pretty much is taking that stance of we don't know what happened. Because they don't. Then we get to the veto competition, and four people are playing because there's three people on the block, and there's a HOH. So we got Karen, Lisa, Kenny, and Chemo. Karen gets to pick the names because they only get to pick two. So the first name she picks is Joe. So that's cool, Joe's playing. The next name she picks is actually Lisa. So Lisa gets to pick, and she's like, oh, Matt is staring at me. Like, Matt wants me to pick him, but ain't no way I'm picking Matt. <laughs> like, uh, so she ended up picking Brooklyn. So Brooklyn's playing, which I honestly forgot Brooklyn exists. And she was my favorite uh, person, favorite cast member for the past two episodes like she wasn't getting no screen time then my other favorite was rubina like the, so many people were not getting no screen time this episode <laughs> like where was tucker at so after the veto matt goes into the bathroom and he's crying like bawling his eyes out the whole house comforts him 
pretty much. He was talking about like his mom and like I can't believe she mentioned that, yada yada. And in my opinion, like I felt like it was more that he didn't get picked in the veto and he feels like, oh shoot, I might be about to go like, I have no fighting chance now. Well he will still because of the BB what's it called? Uh AI Arena. But I still, I do understand, like, he got yelled at by a 50-year-old woman, and he's, like, a 20-something-year-old guy, and she was literally being a Karen, and there wasn't much he could do. Like, if he, what was he going to do, yell or argue with this lady? Like, he couldn't. Like, I, if that was me, so I would have been the exact same as Matt, the exact same. So, you know, like, he tried to, like, explain himself inside the argument, too, but, like, she just wasn't having it. That's when she mentioned the maturity thing, so there was nothing he could do. He handled it the best way as he could. So, I don't blame him for breaking down because it was going to happen at some point. Just like with Lisa. Like, some, you got to break down and it's not really a place you can cry in the house. But a lot of the cast members had his back. I like what Kenny said. Kenny's like, your mom knows you. So, at the end of the day, don't be thinking nothing. Like, your mom's opinion, opinion ain't changing. She saw what happened and she knows you. So we get to the veto competition, it's called Spelling Bee or something like that. It's the spelling competition, which I really like. I really wish I was on this season, because I feel like I could have played this competition. I would love to play this veto. Uh, <laughs> then, so a little bit of a new rule. So they get 12 minutes. Whoever spells the, the, bit, the longest word in the least amount of time they got to lock in will win. But there's a new chip called a delete chip. If you find a delete chip, you can put the delete chip down and then put down a letter that you would like to delete. So competition starts and immediately Kenny deletes. He finds a delete chip and he deletes the letter E because he feels like that's the most used letter and and the most used vowel. It's the most used vowel and most used letter. And I mean, the letter E is three times in the word delete. So like he's he's not lying. Uh, competition goes on a little bit longer. I think someone had just started spelling the word. I think it was Joe, and it immediately got taken out because Kenny deleted the E. But then uh, Lisa found a delete, and she deleted the letter H. I don't know if she had any strategy with that, but that's the letter that got deleted. Competition looked real fun. Everyone locked in a word except Karen. And uh, I'm gonna—I wrote down all the words, but like, excuse me, because I'm gonna have to actually see what everyone put down. First person to lock in was Joe, who locked in the word "spin," so a four-letter word in 12 minutes. And apparently, the N wasn't even an N; it was a Z, so the word didn't even count. Can you imagine if no one locked in a word longer than "spin," and he actually won the competition, but then he didn't because the N is a Z. <laughs> Then Kenny locked in with the word camping, which I thought was a good word considering, you know, no E, no H. So, a good word, respectable in my opinion. Then we get to Lisa, who locked in the word transform, which I thought was a really good word. Nine letters, and, I mean, good for her. Then it was Kimo, who locked in the word pipers, but his word didn't even count because of the E, but he wouldn't have won anyway. Then we get to Brooklyn. Who locked in last but her word was flocks and it just was not long enough so lisa won the power of veto congratulations it was really cool to see her win because she does have people going after her like i mean matt tucker like there's some people that don't like her leah she has some enemies or not enemies but you know like people that would gun for her so it's nice to see her off the block she can chill for a little while because of course she's going to use it on herself the veto that is and we see a woman win the HOH and a woman win the veto in week one. Plus a woman won the um, the power up card with uh, Mackenzie winning it. So this is this is good, and I I like the season a lot. The women are strong, the guys are really entertaining. This is cool. So right after they get back into the house, editing wise, we see Matt already politicking for Brooklyn. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep calling Mackenzie Brooklyn, but Matt already politicking for Mackenzie to use his her power on him, and like he did it in a way of trying to like, you know, what if you used it? Like you know, like he didn't just blatantly say it, but like you know, I don't know. Like there was no way, in my opinion, that she was gonna use it on him. Like it's week one. And like she has so much like no. She should have never even told him that she had it. Now he's about to go and you told Leah, but hopefully her and Leah can stay cool. This, this like Mackenzie, Leah, and Matt just seems like a popular kids in high school. Like cause they're all like good looking, they all look athletic, uh successful, like 
the popular kids alliance. I feel like that should have been their name. Or the beautiful people. The beautiful people. Pretty people. Something like that. But anyway, we get to the veto ceremony, and of course, Lisa takes herself off the block, off the block, and of course, Karen nominates Matt. So now the three nominees are Matt, Kenny, and Kimo. And Matt's in his DR, laughing, saying, "You thought, because, but I'm about to win the BB Arena or AA or AI Arena, and I'm coming off the block, and I'm coming for you, Karen." Yada yada. So. That's where we sit for tomorrow's live eviction episode. Like I said, I have a show tomorrow, so I don't even get to watch this episode live. But it should be a good one, and I uh, expect my review on Friday. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, and share it on all four social media. Until next time, guys, catch you later.